the men in my family were proud fishermen, until I came along. It was expected of us, drilled into us from the moment we were born, that we'd been bred for fishing, but I had no interest in fishing and didn't want to follow in the footsteps of my elders. Uncle Artan had other ideas. It's just for one night, said my uncle, and think of the memories we'll make, the two of us out there, roughing it under the stars. I can't leave Mom by herself, I said, hoping that would be the end of it. I'm quite sure my capable sister can make do without her reclusive son for one night, said my uncle. Besides, she'll probably enjoy the peace and quiet. My mother said nothing, leading me to believe the two of them had conspired in planning this unwanted trip. Think of the fish we'll catch, said Uncle Artan. Somewhere out there is an elusive O-Rid trout destined to be our supper. O-Rid trout, my eyes narrowed. So this is a fishing trip, not a camping trip. But you know I can't swim. Who said anything about swimming, said my uncle. We'll be on shore or on my boat at all times. Besides, who ever heard of a fisherman who can't swim? Who ever said, I wanted to be a fisherman, I asked, imagining the only kind of adventure that interested me, the kind written down on the pages of a book. You're not still afraid of the water, are you? asked my uncle, incredulous. Of course not, I scoffed. And that's how I ended up, against my better judgment, loading Uncle Arton's skiff with fishing gear. It was a warm summer's day, not a cloud in the sky, nor a whisper of wind in the air. Framed by majestic mountains, Lake O'Rid's beauty was unsurpassed. Its blue-green waters were perfectly calm, transparent as glass, providing an unobstructed view of the sand and sea life below. The shoreline was dotted with relics of a tumultuous past, including dilapidated stone fortresses, an assortment of medieval churches, even a Roman amphitheatre. My uncle was a stout but solid man, a tenacious rower whose strength carried us swiftly across the smooth water. Under the harsh midday sun, it didn't take long for beads of sweat to form on his forehead. Make yourself useful and fetch me some water. I reached into my uncle's bag, grabbed a cup and hesitated. It took a few deep breaths to still my racing heart. I glanced over the side of the hull and plunged the cup into the cool water, then passed it to my uncle with trembling hands. His mouth twisted into a smirk. Will you survive? I shook my head. Probably not. Once my uncle's thirst had been quenched, he dropped the cup and continued rowing each determined pool propelling us further from the safety of home. I shimmied over to the middle of the bench, equidistant from either side of the hull, and stared unfocused at the distant mountains. An eternity had passed since I'd last stepped foot on a boat, and my heart ached with nostalgia. When I closed my eyes, I could recall the contours of my father's face as vividly as if he were right there beside me. My father was a true seafarer, more at home on water than he ever was inside our small house. We set up camp on an isolated stretch of sandy beach, carrying our belongings ashore, but leaving the fishing gear in the boat. Like any good fisherman, Uncle Artan had a vast assortment of tools at his disposal. Nets of various sizes, handcrafted lines and hooks, traps and gaffs, floats and buoys. Though Lake Orid was home to a few different types of fish, the one we hoped to catch was endemic to these waters. A variety of trout with red speckled skin, luminous green eyes and delicate pink flesh. Our hunt for the elusive O-Rid trout, which inhabited the deepest waters of the lake, would begin shortly after midnight. We gobbled up the dinner my mother had packed for us, then took advantage of the intervening hours by settling down for a rest by the crackling campfire. When my uncle nudged me awake, Something felt off. A blanket of clouds obscured the stars, casting an unsettling pallor over everything, and the air was uncomfortably cool. We stashed our belongings in the skiff and pushed away from shore. As Uncle Arton heaved his heavy oars through the unpleasantly turbulent water, I felt the stirrings of nausea amplifying my misgivings about this trip. The first roll of thunder caught me off guard signalling the arrival of a storm neither expected nor wanted. I watched as tempestuous clouds gathered above, 
creating an impenetrable wall of darkness. When we'd first dropped anchor, there'd been many other boats nearby doing the same thing. But as the wind gained strength and as the rain began to pour, the other fishermen wisely gathered up their nets, drew in their lines and headed for shore. I pleaded with my uncle to follow suit, but the stubborn old ox refused to pull up his nets. As gentle swaying gave way to furious rocking, my gut churned and I tasted bile. When I could no longer hold down the contents of my belly, I leaned over the side of the boat and heaved. At that precise moment, a large wave crashed into the skiff, tossing me overboard. Unable to swim or even stay afloat, I gasped for air before slipping under the turbulent waters. Without any hesitation, my uncle dove in after me. I clutched his outstretched hand with both of mine, and he kicked with all his might, dragging me back up to the surface. Through the wind and driving rain, my uncle shouted, Are you okay? I said nothing, merely nodded. Uncle Artan hoisted me back onto the boat, then grabbed the hull and attempted to pull himself up. I ought to have reached over and lent him a hand, but there was no way I was getting near the edge again, risking another fall. As I sat there shivering, listening to my uncle flail, I saw it. A spectral ship emerging from the depths of the lake, its ghostly form illuminated by eerie greenish light. It defied all reason, sailing against the gales, with tattered sails that whispered secrets of the afterlife. I opened my mouth, but no sound came out. My strong, stubborn uncle inexplicably lost his grip, let out a soul-piercing screech, and disappeared beneath the surface of the water. Uncle Arton, I screamed, but it was useless. He was gone, dragged down by something I could neither see nor comprehend. I'd dismissed as nonsense the tales I'd heard of the phantom ship of Lake Orid, a vessel that defied the laws of the living, appearing only during the darkest of storms. But there was no dismissing the evidence of my eyes. A flash of lightning illuminated the sky, revealing ghostly apparitions aboard the impossible ship. I stumbled across the skiff, took up my uncle's empty seat and seized the oars. With the phantom ship in relentless pursuit, I poked furiously at the raging water, struggling to maintain my grip on the slick wooden oars. The shadowy figures that inhabited the ship's deck let out mournful cries that sent shivers down my spine. My heart pounded. I struggled for air. The ship was swiftly bearing down on me, seized by an awareness of the futility of my attempt to evade the ship. I released the oars, re-signing myself to the awful fate that surely awaited me. The ghostly vessel loomed overhead, its presence suffocating, and I realized the dreadful truth. I was destined to join the phantom ship's cursed crew, doomed to sail the haunted waters of Lake Orid for all eternity. On board the ship, a familiar figure emerged from the crowd of long-forgotten souls. It was my uncle, his face etched with agony. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. My jaw clenched, another wave of nausea hit, and I spilled the remaining contents of my belly into the swirling sea. The captain drifted, weightless, to the ship's edge, gripping the rail with his skeletal fingers. His skin was pallid, yet translucent, emitting an eerie bluish luminescence. He had dark, soulless eyes, and his tattered cloak billowed around his amorphous body. You were found wanting, announced the captain, glaring down at me. In all the tales I'd heard, this man was said to have a sinister voice that carried the weight of tragedy, portending doom for all who inadvertently crossed paths with his cursed ship. Regrettably, the tales were not wrong. You had a chance to rescue your uncle, said the captain. All you had to do was reach out a hand, and you could have saved him. But you were too cowardly to do so. I swallowed hard, tasting bile. Your inadequacy has doomed your uncle, 
continued the captain. He must stay with me forever. But I have decided to offer you a chance at redemption. The captain turned to summon one of the lost souls at his back. As the shadowy figure drifted forward, his face became luminous and my heart skipped a beat. The man's visage was unmistakable. He looked exactly the same as he had all those years ago, on that fateful day when he'd left home to embark on a fishing trip from which he'd never returned. It is within your power to free your father, said the captain. How? I asked. You must agree to take his place, replied the captain. If you do that, your father will be released from his torment. The burden of grief your mother has carried all these years will finally be lifted. You alone can reunite your parents, soulmates if ever there were. Time stood still, my head began to spin. When I next looked up, my father's sad eyes implored me to bring an end to his long-endured suffering. My thoughts drifted to my mother, who put on a brave face each morning, but whose sobs wrenched my heartstrings as she cried herself to sleep each night. My uncle's grim countenance filled me with dread. Did I have the courage to share his awful fate, to be trapped for all eternity aboard a phantom ship under the tyrannical rule of a malevolent captain whose singular motivation was the relentless pursuit of souls? I should have answered swiftly, accepting the captain's terrible offer refusing myself time to contemplate my options. But that's not what happened. Instead, I let time slip away, allowing myself to be paralysed by fear. The captain's black mouth twisted into a terrifying smile as he gave his crew their orders. No sooner had the ship plunged into the shadowy depths than the wind died down, the rain stopped and the clouds parted. My uncle's skiff sat perfectly still on the glassy water, illuminated by the glow of the distant moon. Alone and shaken, I returned to shore, haunted by the enormity of what I'd done. My uncle had put his life at risk to save me, and I'd returned the favour by letting him drown. On top of that, I'd been too spineless to sacrifice myself to save my father, depriving my mother of a reunion with her beloved husband. I'd been marked a coward, and the memory of my inadequacy would haunt me forever.